Hello again there peeps, Eric the Car Guy here. I've had a lot of requests about doing just a straight up axle replacement. Last axle video I did, there were some ball joints and some other things that were included in that. Uh, this time we're just going to do a straight up axle replacement. One of the number one questions that I get about axle replacement is, Eric, I don't have an impact gun or compressed air like you do. How do I get the axle nut off? Never fear. Let's take a look. Now I've already raised this car up and uh, knocked the wheel off and I've taken out the center cap. Well actually this one already had a center cap that was missing. But all you got to do is take the wheel off and just hit this piece of plastic here in the center out and it'll just pop right out and you'll have like a little little cap that'll just pop back in here when you're done. But you got to take the wheel off, take the center cap out. Sometimes maybe you can pry it out but if you do that you run the risk of scratching your wheel. And I've just reinstalled this with two lug nuts. So quit freaking out. I'm not driving this anywhere. I just put this back on here for a reason. Next, I'm going to apply the parking rake. Next on the list, I grab my handy breaker bar, half inch breaker bar. Not much of one, but 32 millimeter socket. Well, actually, I think this is 36. Yeah, 36 millimeter socket for the axle nut and a suitable pipe to go over the end of a breaker bar. So now that you've got your center out, you can just take the socket and put it straight to the wheel and since the parking brake's on, it's not going to go anywhere. Add the extension and don't be afraid to use your girth. Ta-da! Okay, so now I've showed you how to break it loose, but I'm going to jack it back up and take it off the way I normally take it off with an impact, but if you're in this position now, you just keep spinning counterclockwise. Now free to take the nut the rest of the way off. A little bit of penetrating oil here won't hurt. Now this is the old axle, so I'm not really so concerned about preserving this and mushrooming this out, but um, if you need to hit on an axle to knock it loose from the inside of a hub and you're going to save the axle, just spin the nut back on to the point where it's just flush like this and hit on the nut. That way you don't mushroom this out so bad that um, you won't be able to get it back through or get the nut back onto it. But that's traditionally how it's done. However, um, this axle is being replaced so I really don't care. hit it with a hammer. See how that mushroomed out? Wouldn't have done that had I had the nut on there. Or it would have, but it wouldn't have been as bad. But once again, we're putting a new axle in. What do we care? Probably somebody that uh, takes axles in for cores cares. Next, we're getting under it. Now it's time to get the lower ball joint loose. And for that, we need to first remove the cotter pin. Now, if you're having trouble with cotter pins, you can do what many do, and that is to just cut off the end and then spin the nut right over the top of it. Uh, if you're in an extreme situation, you can do that personally. If I can get away without doing that, I won't. Just because I like to not get them jammed up in there. But this is how I do it. And for the most part, I reuse these. You should really replace them with new, but I, I reuse these all the time, actually. But should you replace them? Yes, you should. Get mad, tell me I'm wrong, whatever. 
Now we need to get the lower ball joint loose from here. And for that, uh, you can use a pickle fork. I've also seen people uh, take a socket and stick it in between here and take this wishbone loose and kick down on here and the, the socket that's forced in between the uh, lower part of the knuckle and the lower control arm will pop the two things apart. It actually works pretty sweet, but you're not always able to get this nut out and doing an axle replacement it's a good idea to get that out but it's not always possible so if it's not possible and actually my preferred method of knocking these loose is just my big old hammer you want to hit what it goes through always hit what it goes through the bigger the hammer the better this is Thor push the axle back through the hub, and there you have it. I'll sometimes take a bungee cord and hook it into my caliper so I can pull it off to the side, keep that out of my way. For this next part, have your oil pan handy. Slide it under the transmission where the axle goes in. Now that you have your pan underneath the transmission, I just use a small pry bar. Slip it in behind the axle, and I just hit it with the palm of my hand, and poof, they usually come out. Now if they don't pop right out, twist them, like just turn it like a, oh, turn it like a turn like that, try again, turn it another turn like that, try again, turn it another turn like that, and try again. You want to try and avoid like sticking a chisel up in between here because what's actually happening when it's not coming out is quite simply yeah and you can see exactly what I'm trying to show you this little clip is the thing that's holding it in so you see how it's split right there so you need to rotate it around so that split gets into a slightly different spot because that's that's really all that's holding that axle in but you got to be mindful of that when you're taking this apart now that you have the axle out it may come through the wishbone it may not like this one won't so we're gonna have to take that take this nut loose or take that wishbone loose if it comes loose. Now if you cannot get this bolt out of this lower control arm, and it does happen, but if that does happen and you're not able to do it, don't try to fight with it. Just take the inner boot here and cut it. go. Take the clamp off and then just peel it off the inner joint and pull the inner joint off the end of the axle. Just like that. Then you just pull this out and don't worry about that stuff because when you put the new axle on you're going to have to do the same thing. The only thing you're going to need is one band and I showed you how to put those bands on. You can put it back together. So, if you can't get this loose, and this sometimes happens, that's what you do. There's a fair amount of grease here, so I'm just going to clean it up. I especially like to get it off the brake lines because the grease will eventually eat away at the rubber. Now, I did not do this part before, but I'm doing it now. Luckily, that all worked out. Like I said, some of you may not be so fortunate. If that's the case, I'm sorry for you. Now, 
can simply pull the wishbone forward, take your new axle, slip it up in. Now, like I said in my other video, you really should set the wheel down on the ground before you tighten this, because you'll stress this bushing. That's what you should do. I also forgot to mention this time that I did mention in the other video, I already got this far, is that you should take the old axle, lay it up next to the new axle, and make sure they're both the same especially the inner parts because uh, if you don't you may be putting in an axle that's not going to fit in the transmission or there's something else going on so definitely make sure of that before you get to this point where you're about to put it back inside the transmission because if it doesn't fit all the way into the transmission it won't seal transmission fluid will leak out things will get ugly so check your parts before you install them make sure they're correct now comes the fun part slide the axle up point where you're be very careful not to damage that seal now twist it back and forth a little bit and then just take the axle and push it in there you go if that doesn't happen take like a rubber hammer or something like that and tap on the outside of this to, to get it in but it should pretty much just go in and go flush just like that and lock down. If you got any space here, try again. Okay, I'll get my bungee cord. It's much easier to do at the right angle. Feed your axle back through. Turn the hub until the splines start going in. Take your ball joint, slip it back in. As long as you got a couple of threads sticking out, you're good. Do that. Your other one. And the rest is installation in reverse. Tighten it down, tighten it down. Put your wheel back on, you just replaced an axle. I'm Eric the Car Guy. You can always visit me at ericthecarguy.com or follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, that is what I'm doing these. That is what you kids are doing these days, I don't know, isn't it? Or you can uh, hear me on the podcast with Rich Baxter from Car and Truck Talk. Uh, cannot talk. From Car and Truck Talk.com Sundays. Anyhow, once again, I hope it was helpful. Yeah, it's pretty simple and straightforward. And I hope you're able to do the job as a result. Questions, comments are always welcome. And uh, I will see you in the next video. So until then, stay dirty. See ya.